All right, in this video we're going to talk about how to make truth tables. So first of all, we need to know what those are. And a truth table is used in logic to show all of the different possible true or false values for a compound statement. So if it's a really simple statement, it only has two truth values. So it's like, for example, if I say, it's raining outside, that's either true or false. So we don't really need a table to organize um, all of the different possible options. However, when you have a really complicated statement with a lot of different pieces to it, sometimes we need a way to, to break that down and look at it in a really organized way to be able to decide when that statement is true or false. So here's an example. If it's raining or if the ground is wet, I will wear a coat and carry an umbrella. So there are lots of options. Um, we've got some different pieces here. We have it's raining, the ground is wet, I will wear a coat and carry an umbrella. And if you remember back to section one, um, we uh, in that, that section they discussed how to write these statements using symbols. So we're gonna call each of these simple statements, uh, we're gonna name each of those with a letter. So I'm gonna call this first one P, and this is Q, and this is R, and this is S. So a lot of times we just start out with with P, Q, R, and S in logic. Um, just like in algebra, you would have X, Y, and Z as some common variables for, um, for use in algebra. Okay, then the connectives. So we have OR, which is this symbol, and I have an AND, which is this symbol. And then notice this is also an IF-THEN statement. So I didn't write the word THEN in here, but it is IF these first two things then I will wear a coat and carry an umbrella. So I also have a conditional here. So I've got if this first piece, then this second piece. All right, so now, is this a true or false statement? Well, it depends on quite a few things. Is it raining? Is the ground wet? Are you wearing a coat? And are you carrying an umbrella? So what we wanna do is examine all of those possible cases. So is this a, for example, is this a lie if it is raining? but the ground is not wet and you do wear a coat and you do not carry an umbrella? Or what about if it is raining and the ground is wet and you don't wear a coat, but you do carry an umbrella? Or maybe it's not raining and the ground is wet and so forth. All right, so we are going to make some charts to just list out all of those different options. And then if you wanted to know you know, if this is um, a truth or a false statement, then you would just, you know, look down that list in that chart and you would find the row. So we're going to have rows and columns. And you'll find the row that has all of the, the conditions that exist. And then you would follow it across and we'll see. Um, we'll be able to label it as either true or false. Okay, so let's start out with some basic truth tables. Now there is a chart in your textbook that summarizes these and has them all filled in. So we need to know all of the different options, true or false, for negations, conjunctions, disjunctions, conditionals, and biconditionals. And then what we're going to do from there is use those basic truth tables, they're charts that look like this, and we're going to construct ones for more complicated statements, like the first example I listed. Okay, so these five are, are always the same, and these are ones that that are like universally known, everybody would, would know what these truth tables look like. Um, statements like this first one, I made this up, so you would maybe not encounter this as often as these five basic ones, but anybody would know how to make a truth table if they knew how to make these five basic ones. All right, so let's start in um, negations. So for, for just a simple statement, okay, like P, like it is raining outside, there are two options. It's either true or false. Right? And then the negation of P, right? So if, if P is true, so think of the statement, it's raining, all right, well, if that's true, then not P would be the statement, it's not raining, and that one's false. So remember that a statement and its negation always have opposite truth values. Now in the case where this is a false statement, if it's raining is false, then 
it's not raining must be true. Right. Now conjunction is formed with two simple statements. So maybe we would have it's raining and I am happy. All right. So now we need to look at all the different possibilities for those simple statements. Are they true? Are they false? What about different combinations of them? So how many combinations are there? Well, this is kind of an, an interesting connection back to what we have already learned um, with combinations and permutations, right? So here, P and Q are different statements. So we want to think of this as um, like basically let's let's do maybe like the fundamental counting principle so we want to know how many options are there for the the truth value for p and how many options are there for the truth value for q okay well p can either be true or false and then q can either be true or false right so now i can repeat like tr uh, trues or falses so it could be like p and q could both be true or both be false so it's not a combination or a permutation, but I can at least multiply to find the number of options. All right, so basically there are four different combinations for true and false values for P and Q. And we could have made a tree diagram to see this as well. Okay, so P could either be true or false. And then if P is true, Q could either be true or false. And if P is false, Q could also be true or false. So there are four different options. Um, now when you're filling in truth tables, uh, there is sort of a, a standard order to do this in. So we always start by doing um, trues followed by falses. Okay, so the P can be true in two cases, either if Q is true or Q is false, and then P is false in two cases, two out of those four and Q can either be true or false. All right, so trues come before falses, and true before false, true before false. Okay, so if you start out with a statement that has P's and Q's in it, this is always gonna look the same. All right, now let's think about the statement P and Q. So this is the symbol for and, this is a conjunction, P and Q. So let me look back down at my example. It's raining and I am happy. So if it is raining and I am happy, now this, this and asking the truth value for P and Q is asking if the entire statement is true. Right? So um, if, if the first part is true, it's raining, and you are happy, true and true, then is this entire statement a true statement? And it, it does make sense, it is a true statement. Okay, so we haven't lied, basically. Um, what about... Oops. Um, let's see. What about if P is true and Q is false? So it is raining, but you're not happy. So it is raining, not happy. Okay, so now if you, if you go up to somebody and you say, it's raining and I'm happy, is that a lie or is that true? Well, in that case, it would be a lie because you said you were both. You said it's, it's raining and you said you were happy, but in reality, you're not actually happy. So that would be a lie. We would say that that statement is false. Okay. Um, what about if P is false and Q is true? So it's not raining, but you are happy, and then you say, it's raining and I am happy. Okay, well, and means both of those things, and they're not both true, so that's a false statement. And then finally, if it's not raining, and you're not happy, but you say that both of those things are true, you say it's raining and you're happy, then that's definitely a lie. So that would be a false statement as well. Right? So the only time when an and statement is true is if both pieces of it are true. Okay, so if you say, um, I went to the store and I bought oranges, 
that's only true if you actually did go to the store and you did buy oranges. Otherwise, it's a lie. If any of those, if either of those two pieces is false, or if both of them are false. All right, now let's look at a disjunction. So these are the or statements. Here's the symbol for or. Oh, I'm sorry, that's a, a typo. I should have, I copied the chart and didn't change that symbol. So that should be an upside down arrow. Okay, so the, um, the way I keep these straight, the one that's like this kind of looks like an A, a capital A to me for and. And then the other one is the or. Okay, so let's do an or statement. So let's say, um, let's say apples or oranges are in the fridge. All right, or I could even say apples are in the fridge or oranges are in the fridge. Okay, so that's an or statement. Um, so the, the P part of it would be that apples are in the fridge, and the Q would be that oranges are in the fridge. All right, so we will start out with the same basic cases. P could be true in two cases, either, either, when, Q, oops, either when Q is true or when Q is false. And then P can be false when either Q is true or Q is false. Okay, so now let's let's say that the apples are in the fridge and the oranges are in the fridge. Okay, both of those are true. But and you make the statement apples or oranges are in the fridge. Okay, is that a lie or a truth? Well, um a lot of times in English when we when you say or, sometimes you mean like one or the other but not both. But in math and in logic, the or statement means it is we can say that even if both things are in there. So it's not a lie. Like if you have both types of fruit in the fridge and you say apples or oranges are in there, uh, that's not considered to be a lie. Um, it doesn't say exclusively one is in there, just you know one or the other, and we've gone above and beyond that, and both are in there. So that would be considered a true statement. Um, what if apples are in the fridge but oranges are not? Okay, so that's the second case. P is true. Q is false. Right? Well, I only said one or the other had to be in there. So as long as apples are in there, I'm okay. I haven't lied. It's still true that apples or oranges are in there. So that's true. And then what about if it's the other way around? There's no apples, but there are oranges. And I say one or the other is in there. Well, that's still a true statement. However, if neither is in there, both are false. Apples are not in there oranges are not in there, and I say that one or the other is, then that would be a lie, so that would be false. Okay. So notice here, or statements are true more of the time, so there's only one case in which this would be a false statement, and that's if neither of those fruits is in the fridge. Okay, so only false if both things are false. In the next video, we will look at the next two basic truth tables, conditionals and biconditionals.